Hello, hello. And Welcome. Wow. We're back Hi. again, guys. Another episode of Spoot. Coast to coast. Coast to coast. Um, Wi-Fi is good. I don't know. We'll find out soon enough. Well, we're we're flying by the seat of our pants, ladies and gentlemen. The Wi-Fi <laughs> is kind of spotty at best right uh, now. It's getting better. It's getting better. Thank yeah, you. So we have Joy. Hello. Hi there. <laughs> Jenny with a really cool Doctor Strange shirt. Show the good folks your. Oh, that is cool. Shirt. I like. I kind of like the whole like neon effect. Yeah, here, like, it, it, awesome. yeah, definitely stands out. Um, and I am representing for WrestleMania Night oh. Two tonight. <laughs> Roman Reigns, my tribal chief. She's right gonna. On, right she's on. trying to get the. <laughs> I'm gonna show you what he's really doing behind the fucking scenes. <laughs> Watching WrestleMania. Okay. Hey, don't judge me, man. Um, he's like, what chat? There's so I had actually gotten over a fear, guys. I was like, man. I really want to go to WrestleMania one year, and it was in Tampa, and uh, where we live in Miami, Florida. Obviously, you guys know um, Tampa is about a three-hour drive. So I was like, "Hey, whatever. I'm just gonna ask Jenny if she's gonna be willing to go." So I asked her. She's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be down to go. Let's yeah, go. Course, Let's I do go it." Anyway. So then I was like, "Oh, awesome. We're gonna go to WrestleMania." And then this little thing happened that changed the course of the world for a year or two called COVID happened, and it wrecked my plans for going to WrestleMania. Oh. So thank you, uh, whoever decided to bring that out to the world. Yeah. Um, Those damn bats. <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. But um, Jenny, we have an awesome guest, someone that we haven't seen in, in years. Yes. So I'm looking forward to... Uh, reconnecting to one of our first friends in the paranormal field. Yes, so we have the beautiful Carly Latham. I'm going to say it correctly. Latham. <laughs> nice. Yes. Um, currently, she co-hosts uh, Death Becomes Her podcast, and they do investigations, and that will be coming out soon. I cannot wait to see the investigation parts, but her podcast is also very awesome you can find those clips on they actually have a separate ig that becomes her pod right and check that out i put everything down on the description show notes and let's bring her on she used to live with us well she didn't live with us personally but she lived in florida hey, where and was she she in our house? Yeah, she's over there in that room. and then uh she moved to texas <laughs> I was the ghost in your closet. All this that's time, what happened. It was me. You were our roommate. First of all, where's my Surprise. money for all these bills? Yeah, if you right. were living here, I know. You know, I some serious back rent. Hey, yeah. that. Was I love it. I love it. So welcome, Carly, to the show. Thank um, you. Awesome to have you on. Yes, uh, thank you for been being following here. you for all of these years that that you've um, kind of like if you will, blossomed into yeah. where, where you're at now. You know, you were yeah. you were in your cocoon stage when you were here with us, and you blossomed into this awesome butterfly um, and taking over the world. Kicking ass and taking names. You're really inspirational, <laughs> yeah. um, my friend. Let's, so you were investigating and, and, and with us, like I was saying, one of our, our – uh, in their first years together in War Party, you were – investigating with us and and um i believe it was in the new river inn uh yeah. that you were investigating with us and we were getting amazing and, results and, yesterday, and yesterday your village and then yesterday yeah. your uh village yeah. but then you started where where your where your name comes out the, mm. the village cheryl which you started coming out with your cards and man when when, when i started seeing watching you painting that picture with your cards and, uh, you know, when, when we were using our equipment and everything was kind of like that story was gelling together, yeah. I was in complete awe. Um, you know, yeah. it, it kind of showed me that those, there's more than one way of, of doing it, obviously, uh, getting yeah. results. And um, it, it was awesome. So, the internet is 
Okay. All right. I don't know if, if, if I'm coming through. Uh, it sounds good on my side. Yeah. Here we go. Well, it looks like we're now on there now. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Uh, yeah. yeah, we can hear you now. You're okay. frozen, though. Yeah, you're frozen, but we, we can frozen. hear you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I wanted to touch first on... Yeah, you, you you left us and you became an author. I left you. Right. I know. I think that's amazing. I <laughs> please tell tell us more about. That. Yeah, yeah. So I I left Florida. Um, I moved to Texas, and I was like, well, what do I do with all my free time now? Not that I have a lot of free time with three kids, but like, I didn't really know anybody locally in the paranormal field. And I was like, well, shit, what am I going to do? Um, and I started writing uh, fictional ghost stories just for fun. And uh, it kind of, I connected with Mallory, who um, we put out several books together now at this point. But it, um, yeah, it, it turned into this whole thing where I've combined little bits of what I'm good at, like like you were talking about when we're investigating together and I'm telling a story with the cards, I just translated it to pick some spooky parts and build something fictional around it. <laughs> so right. it's been it's been really fun. Yeah, I love I love writing. Um and I a lot of my stories I have pulled little details from real ghosts that I've encountered with. I mean, like, not a ton here or there, but, like, I wrote a short story. Do you remember, Jen, um, remember. we did that, that, that Estes method with Joe mm -hmm. at that inn, and he saw that creepy woman, and she was, like, she looked like she was, like, dripping. Um, mm -hmm. So I didn't, I didn't include how scary he described her face, but I wrote this one short story with a ghost that's standing and dripping in the corner of the room. <laughs> so most of my stories will have little, little nuggets of reality in them, but they're fiction. <laughs> I, like, I, I love that. You know, yeah. I saw that same, that same, we, I come to find out, I don't know if it's the same, but it sounds the same. That same girl, um, when I moved here in 2019 in this house on Halloween night, going into like the next morning, um, cause we came back and it was late and I stayed up watching ghost adventures or I don't know, I was watching some shit on TV and everybody was knocked <laughs> out, but they were all around me in the living room, in the wall behind me here. And I saw a girl who was like in, um, a, like a lock night, like a, nightgown like a little kid like pretend like wendy from like uh never never land like that yeah. of, like like uh, and she had her hair like um kind of like this to the side awesome. but wet and so that was the first time i ever saw something mm -hmm. like that and i That's and then so when i told joe about it later he was like that sounds like the girl i saw so yeah. we don't i still don't know if it's connected but it's very strange i saw that same um spirit as well and it kind of reminded me of of the ring samara samara from yeah. the ring because she was that's what i think like of every her, time her skin looked like yeah you know it just didn't look like it had any pigment it just like rotting away oh. and i only saw her, the bottom half so i didn't see her her head because it, i saw her our staircase kind of goes up halfway and then it turns so I only saw like the bottom half of her and, and that's exactly what it looked like. And then I saw her kind of like going up the rest of the staircase and it looked like weird. It wasn't like a normal person walking up the stairs. Um, yeah, you know it freaked me out. And then when, when we talked, we were doing a road trip, the three of us, uh, Jenny, myself and Joe. And then we kind of like were sharing with him our experience and then he told us his and i just instant goosebumps like and i was the one driving um just i just yeah yeah we were both like what the hell's going on yeah do you know if anybody <laughs> passed away where you live now does has anybody do you know like if anybody has they, I, I think they have I to disclose know. that right don't they have to disclose that when you move in somewhere i you think not in florida yeah, yeah they don't have to they I don't have to you have to yeah. Yeah. yeah but i don't know so that I know of nobody died in this house, but it doesn't mean it's from this house. So. Yeah, it could be the same thing that's kind of 
popping in everywhere <laughs> with you and Joe and yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, who knows? Maybe it's probably one of his attachments, and I just send it before up. we go any further. Do you want to say the name of your book so that way it's oh, like right, right after you said it? Yeah, <laughs> um, it. so the first anthology that we put out is called Dark Village. Um, hey, Dark Village. Um, and if you go to Amazon and you click on Dark Village and follow my author profile, the whole list of books will, will be there. Um, we have Dark Village and the 12 Months of Horror is our most recent uh, spooky, spooky books out. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> There's a distinction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those are the if two. Follow those, if you follow yeah, her, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are the two, the two uh, horror anthologies that we have out now um and yeah and mallory has a novel out mallory is also a paranormal investigator yes they these are fictional books um my partner mallory and i are both paranormal investigators and so a lot of what we write is flavored by our experiences within the paranormal but these are fiction that's awesome I'll definitely have to check them out. So yeah. I wanted to ask, um, tell us how you started. Did you have said anything in paranormal? Did you start, did that start when you were small? Like tell us how everything started for you. And then your name, well, it was on Instagram, the village tarot, which how did that yeah. go into like tarot? I was going to ask that question too. Now I got to cross it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was, I was raised Mormon. So like none of this was ever talked about. Like we didn't really talk about ghosts. It just was like, you know, there wasn't anything really talked about. But one thing that I have always felt is that feeling of not being alone in the room or like you're being watched. And I am, spoiler alert, a highly anxious person. So I, my entire life chalked this up to being anxious, like, oh, why am I afraid at night or feel like somebody's standing next to me? I must have just watched Halloween too young or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but what ended up happening is possibly the most ridiculous entrance into the paranormal world ever. But I slipped on a <laughs> spilled milk literally and um broke my foot <laughs> so, Jeez. Damn, damn spilled it, milk spilled milk yeah um it, several tears were in fact shed over spilled milk um oh, but yeah. so it was like around halloween time and i i had my foot in a boot for like six weeks i couldn't drive i couldn't go anywhere and so i ended up binge watching ghost hunting shows and I'm watching and I was like, what the fuck? Oh, sorry. We're <laughs> no, no. No, you're good. You're good. Okay, you're good. Me. Okay. Trust me, you're good. I was okay, hoping you <laughs> Oh yeah. I yeah. I, I like to, I like to joke and say I sound like a princess, but curse like a sailor. Like I say fuck every other word. And I, I know we're streaming live. So I was like, oh no. Uh yeah. So like <laughs> I'm watching these shows and they are of like person after person is describing the way that I feel when like being being watched like feeling eyes on the back of your head feeling like somebody else is in the room with you and i was like i what so like it was like the first time that i had and by by this time i was like fluently reading tarot i was fully in the world and i just never stopped to consider that maybe that feeling was ghosts this entire time um and then i have eric um for more party to really thank for getting me all the way in because he collaborated with another tarot reader and was like, it, they put up a tarot spread and it was while my foot was still broken. And they were like, um, Eric was going to go on an investigation. I, I don't know where y'all were going that time, but he was like, anybody who reads tarot, like give this spread a try and just see. So I did I actually have the deck I used right here. Um, I use this with you guys in person too. Um, yes. Yeah, so I was like, well, why not? Like, why not try? And yeah, so that was that was the start of it. And as far as my Instagram name, I have I have changed it now. Um, 
only because I was having such a hard time with the scam accounts that I was hoping that removing tarot from my name would lessen them. It has, uh, it has uh, made a big difference, but I, I had a painting account before this. It doesn't exist anymore, but I had an account where I was like painting and occasionally I was sharing tarot cards. Mm -hmm. um, and I one day was like, I don't, I don't, why not? I'm just going to go all in and just try it during COVID. And I don't know how I came up with the name. It kind of just popped into my head and then stuck. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't. I, uh, I don't use that name on social media anymore, but it's my roots. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> so how long have you been reading tarot cards? I have been reading since like 2019 is about when I started. Yeah. So yeah, 2019. Did it take you a long time to like memorize the meeting and stuff? Our daughter is like um, dipping into that too. And there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to remember. It is a lot to learn. Uh, daughter, I actually, that's her, that's her. Yeah, that's her daughter. Yeah, I started with um, an Oracle deck, actually. I was given, uh, my house in Florida was haunted. And I had a medium come out to, like, clear it. And she gave me a deck of her cards. It was, a, it was an angel Oracle deck. So I started with that. And it, uh, hi. I, I kind of just took to it pretty quickly. Um, so for the tarot, I bought a uh, Biddy Tarot's guidebook. And mm -hmm. I mean, I have, I don't know where it is right now, but my copy has like pages falling out of it. I've read it so or like referenced <laughs> it so many times. Like I had to tape some pages back in. Uh, so it took a while, but I feel like once you know the meaning, it's, I don't know, it's, it's like a... Like, I don't know. For me, it felt like a duck to water. It just, it took a little bit, but it just made sense in my mind a lot faster than a lot of things <laughs> that I tried in life. I was like, oh, I'm good at this. <laughs> so. Can you give like my daughter or anybody as some advice when they're starting to read out? Like, yeah, yeah, actually. Um, so I taught myself how to read tarot and in the process, I was on like Facebook in tarot reading groups and trying to learn. There are so many people out there who will say that if you're not reading intuitively, then you're not a real tarot reader. And I say bullshit to that every single time. I love a guidebook. Do not be afraid to use the guidebook. Yeah, It doesn't yeah. make you any less of a reader to reference the guidebook. Um, I know all of the tarot meetings by heart at, at this point. But I like seeing what the deck creator and the author specifically have thoughts on that card. So if mm -hmm. you look at the guidebook, it they are different. The explanations are slightly different. And sometimes I will be doing a reading and I think, I know what this means, but something is bugging me and I'll open the guidebook and there is the perfect phrase in there. And I think, well, that's what it is. It just like jumps out at you. So right. my biggest advice to anyone learning is don't be afraid to use the guidebook. It doesn't like you don't have to memorize everything before you can call yourself a tarot reader. You have a deck of cards. You pull one. Surprise. You're a tarot reader. Yeah, I, love that. I, love that. I think that's really good advice. I think people. Yeah, they you know, because people are very judgmental. So, yeah, they are. And I just I feel like it makes it. It makes it, it, it's trying to, I don't like the term gatekeeping very much, but it is kind of I, gatekeeping. That's what I was going to think. It's, yeah. It's they're trying to do that. Yeah. 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 Where you're like, well, if you're a real tarot reader, you do this. Can I read fully intuitively? Yeah, I can. But I like knowing what the guidebook has to say because I like knowing the intent that the artist or the creator of the deck put into the card because they are, mm -hmm. they're different. <laughs> thank you yes thank yeah. you yeah 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 why think, wouldn't you want to use that it's it's a reference you know right it's, it's yeah, exactly yeah it's, it's a tool mine are bougie and you're like you know you, oh, you don't know it by memory and yeah you it's know like, it, but you pick it up you know but, as you go and stuff yeah but sometimes you know maybe you might look at a card and you'd be like you know what i'm 
because it could be one thing, but maybe something in the description or passages that you write for each card, like, mm -hmm. will stand out. And then that, I know that happens a lot. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, the other thing that I did when I started is I wrote down my readings for a long time. So I would, I had, I had like a box somewhere full of journals and I would pull, I don't know, I'm bad at, I'm bad at telling people how to pull cards because I'm like, I don't know, pull to your heart's content. How many do you feel like you should pull? Do that, you know? But like, uh, if I was doing one card or two cards a day, I would write down the card. I would write down what it actually means. And then I would write down how it applies to my life. And um, it it may work well for me because I am a, I'm ADHD. So like seeing and writing makes it connect in my brain a little bit yeah, more. Um, but it's also nice because you can look back and at past readings and kind of see. So I did that religiously when I first started. I don't really anymore. Um, and that's what my Instagram page was at first too. It was literally just, I was posting the cards that I pulled that day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so not quite that anymore, but <laughs> it's sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I love it though. I love that. Yeah, I actually I actually bought my first deck and I actually passed my deck to her because I never really but my deck actually had the the meaning on the card. So it was a lot easier than going oh, back. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. yeah. She yeah. Somehow like, she they're lost somewhere. <laughs> and I can't find it. Lost it. They're hard to find because I have that deck for geez, over 20 years. Yeah. So now, yeah, it's hard to find cards that have that meaning on the actual card yeah it is a lot of them don't have it but mm -hmm. that actually is i have a few their oracle decks or i have a lenderman deck too that has the keywords on it and mm -hmm. I, I i love that because i while i do like looking it up sometimes on the fly it was stolen <laughs> That's awesome. we're gonna find that person on tiktok doing cards with the cards i gave her yeah yep. <laughs> good luck, good luck. <laughs> So you, you know, the house in Florida. So did you have? Um, well, I remember you having certain experiences, but I think like the more you did, you're doing tarot and reading, um, mediumship wise. I guess. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like it brought in, like people wanted to not people spirits wanted to come to yeah. you and like tell you their story. Like yeah, so how, how did that they start? would. Well, oh, my that house just always had a lot of activity. And once I knew that I could use the cards like that, I like if somebody popped up, it would always it would always freak me out at first because they, they always stand really close to my bed while I'm sleeping, which is like I, I have decided that that's the best way to get my attention is just to like jump scare me while I'm asleep. Right. Cause during the day I've got like 10 million things going on and I just don't pay attention. So, but like yeah. it would always startle me because to me it feels like another living human is standing next to me, which is like my worst nightmare ever. So I would like wake up and go. <gasps> and then I started I asking. Like yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I started using my cards and asking like, who are you? What are like, why, why are you here? Do you have something that you want to say? And I started learning how to collect these stories from the spirits. So actually uh, living in that house made me a better medium because it just, uh, it gave me practice, <laughs> but yeah, it, it did seem like when I was, when I'm more active in the paranormal, I will have more visitations because they're like, Oh, she's paying attention. Now we can, we can pounce on this, but like, if I haven't been on an investigation for a while where I live now, cause like this place is not haunted. It's almost like I'll have like bursts of activity if I'm doing something paranormal and then it kind of like dies down. But the house in Florida was just a constant stream of, it was like, I used to call it like a railroad the railway station where, or like a path or something, they would just come in and out. It wasn't like one permanent spirit. It just was literally like a pit stop and they were checking in to tell me their stories. <laughs> oh, so you're you a medium know, too, right? You're a medium too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you know why maybe that happened in Florida and not like where you're at now? Do you think? 
she's moved to Texas. I don't know if we guys said this. But. Yeah, I, I think the house and the land, I think that there was something about the land itself where I was living because a lot of people in my neighborhood in Florida had experiences. Um, and I think the house here, this is my parents' house. So like, it's just like a, a different vibe and they're not interested in any of that. And I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's like the energy here just feels like a neutral zone. So like every once in a while something pops up, but when it does, I'm like, I know you're here for me. I will get to you. <laughs> it, but the house in Florida, it was just n nonstop. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's, wow. I, I think, I think the land and the house itself. A and lot of homes in Florida, Florida were built on native grounds. A lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, I mean, yeah. I'm not saying that that's just the case in it your scenario, been, but though. it very well yeah. could have been. Yeah. 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 No, it could have been. I I did some research on like the land itself, and there was. I want to say that there was like an actual trail pretty nearby. Oh, I wish I remembered what I, I don't remember the history of it, but there was like an actual battle and they, people would walk up and down that area. So very much like what I was describing mm. where it was like, people are just coming and going constantly. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to look that up again and see if, if I can remember. Cause um, what area was it again that you lived in? Do you remember? Brevard County. I lived in Titusville, Florida. Um, Titusville. Oh. Yeah. Is Titusville. That, um, so it's up by Cape Canaveral. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's on the east and like, coast. yeah, it, like Cocoa Beach. Not that yeah. far from like Casadega. It, yeah, it's actually, not that, that far. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was pretty close. Yeah, Casadega. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It was a. I would say yes. A, a native. There's a huge possibility that there was native grounds. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I Have you been to Casadega? I didn't make it before I left. Isn't that crazy? Every time I had plans to go, like. I made several trips, like scheduled to go. Something always happened, like the day before or that day. No way! That's wild. Titsville. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm driving Titsville or Titsville. <laughs> but I've been yeah. hearing this as I was a kid. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I'm gonna call it that. Yeah, that's uh, cross the line paranormal. That's a good friend of ours uh, now. Um, James. James. He follows her. Yeah, James. he's yeah. awesome. So, James, <laughs> yeah. thank you, buddy. Um, <laughs> yeah, so actually, I, I wanted to. Uh, did you want to ask that one before I ask my question? No, oh, I did. Oh, you did. Okay, so I, I actually wanted to um, touch a little bit back on, on the night where I was saying, like, you painted that picture vividly for me. So that yeah. was in the Old Navy Schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. And it was the three of us and Eric. And we were investigating and we kept getting some type of a, a, a like a man was murdered there. Uh -huh. But the man was like not a good person. And then as you were throwing your, 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 your readings, your cards, it, you ended up unveiling the story where the man was poisoned because he was abusing the spouse. Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. you remember, yeah. remember that one? That was yeah. amazing. No, yeah. and then it was just as we were revealing or peeling the layers of the onion, if you will, it, it seemed like the spirit was getting more upset because he was kind of playing the victim at first. And we yep. were like, no, no, sir, you were like, yeah, because uh, she was coming through. Piece of work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it yeah. was kind of like she needed to do that just to be able to be, well, if it wasn't, if it wasn't him, it was going to be her. Yep. So, you know, she, she defended herself. One or the and, other. Oh, great. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, have you had any type of uh, readings like that or, or, or in in locations that you've investigated? Have you ever uncovered stories like that? It's like, man, it's kind of like this is playing out similar to like a movie, man. Have you come across any other stories like that? Yeah, actually, um, I that's like the majority of the stories that I get. Like my work as a medium I really don't get like people's loved ones popping up and being like, oh, tell so-and-so that I love them. I get the people who 
were like wronged, were murdered, or were like, they are not telling my fucking story the right way. And I need you to listen to me and I need you to tell it. Um, those are the kind of ghosts that are attracted to me. And I have theories as to why, but like, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all that I deal with. So like, um, I, I used to, when I was doing paid readings, I would have people ask if I do mediumship and I say no, <laughs> because <laughs> the kind of mediumship that I do is not what you are looking for. If you're wanting yeah. to connect with your grandma, you're coming to the wrong person. There's 10 other people for that. My mediumship is basically um, strictly for investigating. Um, occasionally, I will have loved ones pop up in like a, a regular session if I'm helping someone work through like, um, oh, I there's like a shadow work session. But if I'm helping someone work through their problems every once in a while, a, a loved one will pop in. But yeah, I get stories like that a lot actually. And they will pop in and sometimes they can give me like a crazy amount of details about their life. So they'll, they'll tell me what happened and they'll be like, yeah, well, when I was little, this, that, and the other. And other times it's like they're, it's, it's not like a residual haunting, but it is like they're stuck in a loop or of sorts where they can't really tell me anything about before. They just kind of keep recycling the story of what happened to them. And once I've gotten most of the details right, they kind of drop off and move on. But yeah, they, I seem to attract ghosts who have seen some shit and want to tell people. <laughs> that's cool. That is cool. Yeah. That is, and doing paranormal investigations, like that's so, it comes in handy. That's what I was oh, yeah. just seeing that. Yeah, yeah. It does come in handy. And I feel like, well, even like yesteryear village, um, everybody usually goes there to see, to talk to Joseph. Right. And Joseph, right. yeah. And I did a reading and I was like, well, who's this woman? Like, why am I getting this woman? Remember and, that? Yeah. yeah, we had those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I like I dug pretty deep into like trying to figure out who she is. I got details from the readings. I was like reading historical stuff, trying to figure out who she was, and uh, I am pretty sure that it was Mary Lily Flagler who was married to Henry Flagler, who Henry made Flagler. built all the railroads, like huge fucking name in Florida, um, and. She, they owned the house. I don't even know if she lived there, but I went in and I was like, sup, who wants to talk? And she was like, me, I do. Um, and yeah, it, but it's that same sort, sort of thing. I get the spirits who went through some troubled times and need to talk about it. <laughs> so I kind of joke that I like my work with the living and the dead is to help people work through their trauma. Cause that's, that that's what that's what I do. <laughs> Casper's dad <laughs> in the flesh. <laughs> I remember there was a time that we were practicing. This is like when me and Joe first started. I think we first we I probably had this both at that time to be uh, both have Momenta Mori. Yeah, so the Momenta Mori deck. Um, I, I that, always oh. credit you for showing me that deck because yes. that, that deck, I use that shit all the time. I love that deck. That's my favorite. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And we were trying to do like, see if we can tap into Joseph. And I, I remember yeah. one time we, so we were on like, I guess we were on IG or whatever. And yeah. you remember how like we were talking about him and like calling on him and, and I don't know what he was telling us at that time. I think it had to do with the lady, actually, because that that did pop up again. And I yeah, did. Um, say like say like if you're not like, on a Zoom meeting, there's like a black screen. If it's only like if there's more space, like if it's not like a quad, like how people are seeing this video right now. So yeah. on the black area, I saw it was funny because when it happened, I was like, "Yo, what the hell was that?" I so I saw that. like a black figure come up on the black section of the screen. Like pop in like slowly like this and then like yep. recede and went back out and I was just like, what am I looking at? Like what is that? And I was like, I'm, I guess it was Joseph. I don't know, but that was the first time yeah. that that ever had happened. And that I started, I started thinking. I was like, wait a second. So like, for, from from then on, 
is what I, had me think I need to put like protections up when I do readings. Yeah. Because spirit, like I've gotten card like on the card and sick and on on that deck where the visitor card will come up and I was like, oh no. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's... So what do, does that mean for you the same? Like somebody's popping in and I was like, oh no, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But I that moment is what made me realize that. And I was like, no. It's really happening. Cool. Yeah, that's been a really interesting thing for me. Oh, my TikTok. That's yeah, that's been an interesting um she's more open to random energies, whatever out there is her connection. Yeah, yeah. So I don't I don't connect through people. I connect through my cards specifically. So like um like Amy Bolesky, for example, I just investigated with her at her property. Um she is a very, very famous psychic medium. She is amazing to watch work and she uses the other person's energy when she channels and um i don't work that way it's probably why i'm not good at reading people's loved ones um so i think that they are i think they notice my energy or whatever like i feel like whatever we're radiating they're like she's seen some things she's gonna get this story i can tell her um yeah. but Practicing mediumship the way that I do, I don't have to be physically at a location. And so it's been interesting seeing that I can show other people that like, you could do that too. And I usually explain it like a phone call or something like that. But there are definitely times when the energy in the room shifts and I'm like, oh, you're here, here. Okay, then. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And most of the time it doesn't really bother me. Um because when I end the session, if like someone is physically here, I'm like, all right, thank you for coming, uh, like telling me what you need to say. Get the fuck out. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Bye. You can't hang around here. I like to sleep. <laughs> but that will happen. Like I'm totally. Yeah. Like, that, yeah. It's so loud. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I think you're the first medium that I've heard of that does that. Everybody else yeah. channels loved ones or whatever. So that's really cool, though. I didn't know there was, like, different things that people, you know, different stuff you could pick up on. So that's good. That's yeah, and there's, every day. There's, definitely, there's definitely people that do both. It's just uh, I am better. Wow. I'm better in this realm. Um, yeah. And it could be that I'm just, I'm more comfortable there. I don't know what that says about me. But <laughs> I'm like... I'm like, well, somebody else can talk to grandma. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm your gal. You know? like, there's some deep scandal. Is there a mystery surrounding your grandmother? Then you can hit me up and I'll be like, yeah, I want to hit up your grandma. And say, hey, tell me your secrets. Did you, did you goodbye Earl, your husband? <laughs> yes. Dude, and then we tell you secrets. Let me tell you, like, we have okay. uncovered the, the whole poisoning thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think with, with Joseph from the Roto House, how um, he was set up or how power would you like to like phrase it? Yeah, so he was he was uh, wrongfully accused of stealing from from the riddles and that never happened. Um so they they were saying that they sold their money and their jewelry or whatever just the riches um and that never happened lord knows what happened to to mm -hmm. all that but he wasn't the one that did it um and since the riddles were so well liked in their community all the towns folks believed him so it was just a constant reminder all the time yeah you stole from him or we don't want you here you're a thief or whatever um and and that never happened. I had I had just a normal conversation with him because everybody has that bullying mentality with him, mm -hmm. uh, just trying to pick a fight with him. And I just talked to him as a man, and and I wholeheartedly believe that he didn't do it. Yeah, I don't think he did it either. Um, and I I remember when I was first asking you about Mary Lily he was like really defensive, and I was like, yeah, what's yes. this about yes. like really defensive? Was like, yeah, like, oh, like you know, I, that's that's I where that part her. came into. Yes, I remember yeah. that now. Yeah. yeah, he was like, I didn't hurt her, 
And I was like, whoa, I never said you did. I just wanted to know who she was. <laughs> so I was like, I didn't, yeah. I didn't know at that point, but yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I feel like, I mean, there's definitely times when I will square up with a ghost. Like if you're, if you're, if, if it's coming at me angrily, like I will push back and be like, no, <laughs> fuck you. Don't talk to me like that. Like, <laughs> you know, like I'm not out there to antagonize them. Because I do feel like going in, like this is another person sitting in front of you, is uh, for me a better way to communicate until they get feisty, and then I get feisty back. <laughs> so, what would you? What was your meanest, or like the meanest, craziest spirit ghost that you were able to pick up? Like if oh. you ever that was like just really bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. The, my scariest experience still, and I've. I've been to I've been to quite a few places now, but my scariest place was the Devil's Tree at Port St. Lucie. Uh, I went with oh, Joe nice. and Mike. Yeah, yeah jo that yeah, place. Yeah, Joe, Joe, I remember. Yeah, you that went place. twice, right? Or no? You know, I don't actually know. I for sure was there once. I, I yeah. No, I we were gonna there. meet up with them the second we were time. Going to. We never. Okay, we, gonna, we yeah. never went. Or we, yeah. it just, the plans fell through. Yeah, I was supposed to go once and I wasn't able to make it. Um, I made it, I made it with the one time. And yeah, like I am, like I am that weirdo that like, I will like touch trees and be like, hi. <laughs> you know, like, like. Joy you know, is I, also. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like, I like to touch them and like feel their energy. And um, we went up to like the false devil's tree and I had my hands all over it. And I was like, you know, like I get amped, like I get excited when we're investigating. So I'm like bouncy and like, you know, having the time of my life. We get up to the actual devil's tree and I was like, hold the fuck up. <laughs> the energy what? completely. <laughs> completely different. I was yeah. so scared several times that night. And like, I wouldn't touch the tree. I didn't even like you guys have seen the way I read cards. I literally, I sit on the floor, I sprawl out in the dirt. I have my cards everywhere. And yeah. when we were close by the tree, I was like squatting. I wouldn't even like sit on the ground near the tree. Mm. It was, I have never yeah. encountered anything that intense. Um, and they were like, everybody told me before and like straight up, I didn't fully believe it. They were like the way that you say, if you say the killer's name, there's like a huge breeze that just like blows through. And I was like, well, it's outside. So like, what's okay. the story behind the tree? I I know we talked about it a few times or it's brought, been brought up on our show. What's the story so, behind? It? So it's just that area of that park. There was a cop. Um, who, Can I say the name? Yeah. What happened? John Schaefer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> John Schaefer, so no hesitation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he was in in the 1970s around when around when Ted Bundy was caught. So like he didn't get as yeah. much media coverage because fucking Ted Bundy up there. <laughs> but, yeah. So he went. Um, he had killed. Was the only woman? I think so, right? Yeah, it was the only women. So he would oh, get women, can yeah, them, young women. Uh, take them, do whatever. And I could have sworn he dismembered bodies. I don't know if I'm correct on that. I believe yes. And then after he, he hung them. Yeah, yeah hung I think them. he hung yeah. them and like field dressed them is the that's the way they described it to me when I when I was there. Mm -hmm. It was like like a like a deer carcass or you know, it was right. Icky. Yeah. Upside down. I don't know. I don't know that they were. I think that they were still by their necks. I don't know for sure. Yeah. I don't know that part for sure. <clears throat> if you look and closely, he dumped a whole bunch of bodies in this park area. Yeah. yeah. And if you look closely at the tree, there's still rope hanging from. Yeah, there. there's still rope. Oh no! Shit! Yes. Wow. Yeah. How was yeah. your um? As you were, I wanted to ask you, as you were walking closer to the tree. What, what, what were your feelings? Because I know when we were walking, oh. I felt like pins and needles. Yeah. I felt like I, I was being watched. Yeah. I was being followed. Um, it, it felt like that a lot. Yeah. Whatever Most was there did not want us there. Yeah. Yep. That is the way it felt. Yeah. I, I said at the time, I, I was like, 
it, it's the biggest stay away vibes that I've ever felt in, in my entire life. And so when we got up to the tree, there was like a spot where I was like, I turned to Joe and I was like, I don't want to go any farther than this. And he was like, well, look up. And I looked up and I was right under the branch where they had been hanging from. It was like, okay. And, but then yeah. it was like, every time I would back away from the tree and come back closer, my, like the, the part where I wanted to stop was like farther and farther away from the tree. Like everything was like, get away from this area. Um, and some of his victims were coming through and were like, you know, they were like, move, get out, get out. And we did back up to the path for a little while. And the energy completely changes when you're on the path versus when you're in, it's not a grove, but there's like a tiny little like clearing where the tree is. Um, yeah. it, it's a completely different vibe. Like on the path, I was doing my normal thing. I was, yeah, a, a black figure there. Yeah, I totally, oh, wow. that, yeah, for I, sure. I saw something going yeah. up to the tree myself, actually. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so they say that if you say his name, um, there'll be like a strong, like a breeze will like rustle through all around. And like everybody had told me this and it's not like I, I am skeptic. I'm a believer, but I'm also skeptical. So like mm. I will pretty much question anything that anybody tells me until yeah. I've experienced it. And then I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. they had told me that and they said it, I kept forgetting his name. So Joe and Mike had to keep repeating it like all night. And every single time immediately after there really was this like, yeah, exactly like that. And I was like, oh shit. Okay. I believe you now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. That is that that's the darkest energy. Like I've, I've talked to plenty other like murderers and things like that before, but nothing so far has lived up to the devil's tree. Wow. <laughs> and we where's that, that in Florida? No. Yeah. Port 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 Lucy. Lucy. Port okay. mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we did a Delco session. I did I was doing the Delco session myself there. And um Oh, that'd be so like, scary. I feel so <laughs> the reason why I think it's so dark there is because you know how like some people, I mean, maybe killers, they have remorse. I don't think this guy gives a shit. Like no. he is so proud yeah. of what he did. Those and were he his even, trophies. He came yeah. through even yeah. showing that. Like, so I felt like somebody like come up behind me and I like, have their hands on my shoulder like, mm -hmm. like this. And in so during the, with the spirit box, I heard, and it was only in one ear. It was like the this ear actually. So it was like, Hey, you and I was like, in the way oh, it was said, oh, I gave you goosebumps. I was like I so <laughs> uncomfortable. I said, like, Oh my god! And then, meanwhile, he's snapping pictures, and on yeah. that same side, there was a face that started morphing, forming no next to her, yeah, from like here, like face. this. And oh, then I was seeing, no, no, I kept no. seeing skulls all over the place, like mm -hmm. you know, like a skull will pop up, a skull will pop up, and there was one skull in particular, like I guess I think I said, like something about the the women there or whatever but there was like three skulls that popped up like once and i kind of in my head i'm thinking those are the those are three girls like mm -hmm. three women and then uh, there was another skull like when they would receive back and another skull that came through and it was weird because it was just a skull but then he had like a mustache yeah so then oh, i said wild. it and then joe goes he had a mustache and yeah I, and then he showed me a picture of him i was like what Wow. Like, yeah. like the same style and I can you know there's different styles of mustache you can have a curly up or you know be like Captain Hook or something but he had like one that was like down and that's yeah. exactly what it looked like down she said yeah, it, was just the whole, it was so yeah. crazy the whole experience was eerie because it was very eerie. Joe was wow. asking the question so I was like oh I'm gonna just start snapping away um, and I'll pop in with the questions here and there and Joe was asking questions but he was keeping an eye on on some of the other equipment that we had there and everybody was getting affected in in but jenny got the worst of it because yeah. you're doing the the session she's visualizing it and literally the guy is like talking to her ear yeah like, <laughs> hey you and i was just like oh no get yeah. back and then i can feel this like i felt this on both and, I, and then so i can so then i started thinking like getting the visual of like how he would do to women like you know yeah back then or whatever and then just so so uh, that, and then the you know what was worse actually 
the walk out of there was the worst because I actually heard like what sounded like people were like running towards us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it a long walk or is it like a hop, skip, and jump? It's a good it's walk. Decent. It's a good yeah. walk. It's, it's not decent. far, I mean, but it's, it's not like three walk. miles yeah. like Errol Jet. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. All right. That's far. <laughs> no, but the Devil's Tree, no, it's not a far walk. So is it like foresty or is it like a big park kind of type situation mm -hmm. going on? Or there's like, a, there's like a walking path, but then you go off of the path a little bit. So it's like a, a mix of both. But I mean, but there is, I mean, it's a lot of like trees. trees. It's a lot of um, like thick shrubs and stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah. it's, I would say foresty. Like, I yeah. wanted but to. I don't know if it looks like that for you guys. The forest in California don't look like what we have over here in Florida. Oh, yeah. It's just like a cluster of like a whole bunch of different types of trees. Yeah. And it's so thick that you can't get in there. I would say the, you know? it, I wouldn't even call it like a forest. I would call it more of like a woods because I think like forest is more bigger. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this is probably like the equivalent of maybe like four or five blocks. Okay. I would say is how big it is. But yeah, it, very, yeah, I, I very, go very creepy. I, yeah. I'll say that. Much. Yeah, I um, want to go back big time. Yeah, I, I want to go, go back and do that. I, I, I wanted to go back. Oh, man. Hey, but, is it yeah. going to be we, just we, as scary? You know? <laughs> we owe each other that, that time that we were never able to, to, do. to do it all together. We so that would be great. Yeah. If I'm, next time I'm here, in we'll Florida, I will, I will, if I plan a trip to Florida, I will let you guys know and be like, Book, clear these dates. We're going. <laughs> no, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got to yeah. go back. We're itching to go back, so. <laughs> yes. yeah. Wow. yeah. That seems cool. Cool, creepy. I want to I go. <laughs> in Texas, so have you done any investigating in Texas? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. I've yeah. done a little bit on my own. Um, there are some groups here, but they're not, like, super active. Um where I live, I live in the Rio Grande Valley. So there is a ton of haunted mm. history down here. It's just like, I don't have the connections. So like, hi, if you see this, you live in the Rio Grande Valley, hit me up, please. I will read cards for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so what I've been doing, and it's like, it's hit or miss is, cause I usually have my kids with me when I'm out. And so like, I will go to a place and just kind of try to like pick up how I'm feeling when I'm there. And if I'm able to, I I always have my deck with me. So I'll like pull some cards and try to figure it out there. Uh, I need a better system because um, for me, it doesn't really matter if it's daytime or nighttime. I prefer nighttime just because it's more fun. But also, like, yeah. I don't really want to wander around at night by myself. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I did have... I went to this one house and this one, I need to get back there and see like what happened. But um, I was pulling cards and I was getting responses, but the man who was talking to me felt like, felt like he was just like waking up and surprised that I was there and that he was talking to me. It was just like, who are you and what are you doing here? And then it was almost like, he was trying to remember how to talk. It was it was a really weird feeling. It was it was almost like literally like I woke up a ghost on accident when I was there because I did what <laughs> I always do and I just rolled up and I was like, "Hey, is anyone here? You want to talk?" You know, and uh, you know it was like it was a definite the same the same storyline was hitting. I didn't quite understand it. Uh, I need to go back and like redo it. But it, it was like talking to someone who just woke up. Um, so now I'm like, did I accidentally, like, was this place haunted before? And is it haunted now? That's what I want to know. I don't know anybody who, like, I don't know anybody who works there. But I'm just waiting for the day that someone's like, hey, did you know that this fucking place is haunted? And I can be like, sorry. <laughs> How long has it been haunted for? That's what I want to know. Because if it's within True. six months. That was definitely me, and I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. So, good, good to hear. So when did you discover that you had gifts? You didn't say, oh, we didn't ask you that, right? No, we didn't ask you that. 
Um, yeah, well, when I like discovered that I could do this was when I was when I broke my foot. Um, so I, I already knew that like, I, it's easy for me to pick up how other people are feeling and things like that. Like mm-hmm. I can, I can, I can pick up vibes. Um, and it, it's part personality. And also there are lots of research that has shown that if a person has experienced trauma, you are more likely to be more empathetic than the average person. Yeah, so yes. I, I always like to add that in there because there's a lot of people online who are like, I'm an empath. I'm an empath. I say, yes, you are. But did you know everybody is an empath and you could be more of an empath just because you had some trauma? <laughs> like it's, so, um, yeah. yeah, so I, let's see, more recently, most of my experiences have come through dream visitations, which is new and like, well, it's not new, but it's happening, happening more frequently. And it's interesting because they will, it, it's almost like watching a movie, but I, I see it from their perspective. And mm-hmm. so then I wake up and I'm like, what the fuck was that? And I'll pull up <laughs> Memento Mori. And that's, uh, I always start and I'm like, was this a dream or was this a dream with a capital D and the the spirit visitation card that you were talking about earlier Jenny anytime that one comes out there's like a few like the ghost card but there's a few that will yeah. come out and I'm like okay this was a ghost um yeah and it that might be the way that they're reaching me more now because this place isn't haunted and I just don't get out all that much so um but it's it's interesting um so yeah I, I think I've always been sensitive but I didn't know what I was I didn't know what I was picking up on until I broke you my had your aha moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that works like that for everybody. Like yeah. in hind in, in hindsight. Now I think about in talking hindsight. to so many people, right? And listening to everybody's like people's stories and their experiences. And I'm like, shit, that was happening to me, but I didn't connect the dots. Yeah. So like when you sit there and you start really thinking about it. So yeah, like what I do, I, I, I do a journal. Yeah, write it all down. And then you can look back on it. Yeah, like I, I can remember being little and like being convinced that someone was in the room with me and like it annoyed the shit out of my parents because again, they don't believe in any of this. And yeah. when it's a kid, it's easy to be like, you're having a nightmare, go back to sleep. But like, I can remember a lot of time, like one more than one time when I was like, well, I'm not going back into my room. So I would sleep on the floor with a blanket next to my dog. That's what I would do. Yeah. That's what just to me. Be like that place is not safe. So like in hindsight, I'm like, maybe they have always been visiting me at night. And I just yep. as an adult recognize it differently. So if my exactly. kids experience something, I try to like reassure them, but also like take it seriously so that they know that if they do have an experience, they can come and tell me. And like all three of my kids have done, have done so at one point or another. I've been wanting Mella. a reading lately. Mella, you better get your reading girl. Yes. Yes. We have Michael and Carly on here. Yeah. Well, I don't know if Michael's still on here or not. Michael. Listen. And <laughs> I was going to, so I think you brought up your kids, right? So uh-huh. how are they, especially your little one, because I love her. So yeah. do you see that any of them have like your same, going down your same path? Gift one I, like that? I think the littlest one is the most likely out of all three of them to do yeah. what I do. Um, my oldest so daughter, cool. we, we like to talk about this sometimes because she is very drawn to like crystals and things like that. Like I have a lot of friends who are into crystals and I take it seriously. I take their belief seriously, but to me, it just feels like holding a rock. Like I don't have that connection. My connection, like I get that feeling. Not this rock right here. That rock right there. I get that feeling (laughs) from my cards. And so like, so my daughter is more interested in that. So I think she probably will get into some stuff, but it'll be way different from anything that I do. Um, My son had a lot of experiences in Florida, but right now he's on his own little journey of figuring out what he believes. And I'm kind of the type of parent that like, I didn't have a lot of choice in deciding what I wanted to believe when I grew up. So like, I kind of let them work it out on their own. If they can ask me questions, I tell them what I think. I ask them what they think. So 
he had like he wouldn't even sleep in his room in Florida and his room had it had a vibe it was scary he would hear yeah. footsteps in there at night like he had all sorts of stuff going on in there um but now he says that he doesn't think that ghosts are real and I'm like that's fine like you don't you don't have to believe anything that I believe so he I'm not sure I think he it, he's experienced a lot and he may have decided that he didn't want to anymore and just kind of like shut it down shut it or yeah. so like he's he's a maybe but my littlest one is just like a spooky little thing like she's like Wednesday Adams in the flesh and yeah. if, any, she's if so anybody <laughs> she's hilarious if, if anybody was gonna take like was gonna follow in my steps as far as the paranormal and the work that I do it probably would be her <laughs> <laughs> has she seen anything like do you know like she told you like mommy yeah. there's some crazy stuff going on no, so this was the most, like, this was one of my first dream visitations, and this was in Florida, and actually was Mary Lily, who we were talking about earlier, Mary Lily Flagler. Mm -hmm. So um, I had one of those dreams where I was Mary Lily, and she was kind of explaining the relationship with Joseph and how, like, uncomfortable it was. Like, there was definitely the, like, a attraction and, like, uncomfortable touches on his end and she was like e, you know from from what I experienced in the dream and I woke up and I was like I don't know what to think about that that's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me and my daughter slept with me at the time so she woke up and she said mommy there was a woman in our room in in the room last night and I said what and she described a woman with dark hair piled on top of her head wearing a long dress with flowers on it. And I went to look up pictures of Mary Lily and I was like, <laughs> the fuck? So like I was having that dream and then I wake up the next morning and she says there was a woman standing next to the bed and describes someone who sounds a lot like the spirit that I was seeing or, you know, dreaming about or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so she, it, and it, it's hard to say now because like, and my parents are super religious, so we have to kind of be like on the down low about it all. But um, yeah, so she's 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 pretty open and she's into all of this. Like she wants me to take her to cemeteries and I, I've gone on trips a few times and I've shown her pictures. And every time there's like a cemetery, she goes, oh, you went to the cemetery without me. <laughs> and, uh -oh. Like, you know, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. She, she loves to go. There was this like tiny little one it, near my house in Florida and she would want to go with me all the time and we would bring flowers and like we put like coins on some of the gravestones and she just, it, it was a vibe. She, she loved it. Um, so I know she's seen at least one ghost <laughs> for sure, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's wild. I mean, she's she's something else <laughs> oh man well and since her being the youngest like more open to seeing that but yeah like i've always thought that she was the one that would yep. really yeah yeah follow, follow that yeah and, you know like say when i was little my parents the same thing with you like no it's a nightmare don't worry about it whatever and you're just like dealing with it but at least yeah. for now for the for people who are who are into the paranormal and they have kids they can either you know make them understand like you know you don't gotta be now that you don't have to you know you don't want to freak them out but you know set some boundaries have teach them have that as a learning tool to yeah. teach them to set boundaries and that you know they can not be scared you know and then but yeah. i think like i i tell my kids you know i took them to a cemetery right to see uh a lady I consider my grandmother, and then they, I think that was the first time they were ever at a cemetery, so I was like, when people die, this is where they, you know, this is like a resting place where they go, they sleep here now. They were just like, what? You know, and that, that just blew their mind in its own, so like, can you imagine? So I had to like go little by little, I mean like, but yeah, they might do the paranormal thing, and this and that, and it's fun, because they're more open to it, so as long as they understand and they, they know, and I think that doesn't shut it down, yeah. You know, they like it. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. I always used to tell mine that like, if something's there, I'll handle it. 
And then, but then yeah. I was like, I was like, just come tell, I'll take care of it. Like, don't worry about it. But then I'd say, but all you have to do is tell it to leave. Like, it's not allowed to leave. Turn a light on, um, like do whatever that makes you feel safe, but also just come mm. tell me, I'll, I'll take care of it. I have zero problems telling a ghost to get the fuck out. You know, it's one of my favorite things. <laughs> they, see, they see me do the same thing. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. They're like, uh. Okay. Yeah. So all, all of my kids at one time or another, or except for the littlest one, cause she's into it. But like the, the two older yeah. ones both been like, Mom, Oh, actually, um, my oldest daughter has seen way more. I just, I just remembered that. Cause, um, at the house in Florida, speaking of the creepy lady with the like dripping, this wasn't her, but like similar vibe. Um, she, what was happening? I saw something weird that night or I had something weird happen that night. And my daughter was like, there was this lady and like, like a white nightgown, like dark hair crawling on the floor towards my room, like towards my daughter's room. And I was like, the fuck, what? Cause that's <laughs> something that I need to like pay attention to. She yes. was like, that's Samara Samara for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's like, that's some, that's some Samara shit. And um, I was like, what'd you do? Why didn't you come get me? And she was like, you think I was going to go out into the hallway with that? And she goes, no, I just went back in and went back to sleep. And I was like, well, <laughs> that's, that's my kid. I don't know, girl. I'm not going to be able to sleep with that. Listen, <laughs> like I tell people all the time, I don't see things like every once in a while, I get a glimpse of something and like, I'm fine with that. Y'all can see stuff. I'll just be, I'll, I'll feel what I feel. That's fine. You can see the shit. I'm good over here. I don't want to know what you look like. <laughs> That's oh, unhelpful man. if I don't if I don't know who I'm talking to. It would it would help a little bit to Probably like, more. you know. But so when you guys see stuff, is it like like you're seeing me, or is it like a like more distorted? Um, I don't I don't know what it's like for my kids. It, if I'm catching glimpses of something, it's like flashes in my in my mind. Flash, okay. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's what about you, Jen? Do you see the same thing? Like a flash, like a, are there one minute gone the next? I've time? seen it. So I, I've had different um, types. I've, I've seen it like, I think I'm seeing it with my eye. Mm -hmm. um, I've, and I've seen it like in my, in my mind's eye. And um, there was one time I was just talking about it with Armando. We had stayed at the Keys <laughs> and I thought I saw a real person. But that was, oh, I think that was the first time where I was like, oh, that I legit thought it was a tangible person. And we had, we were checking out from one of the hotels there. And it was, it was a, it was a lady who was like in a, kind of like, I think about it now, I'm like, obviously it's not really her, but it was a maid outfit, like an older style, like maid outfit. Um, she was a black lady, probably like mid maybe my age, like mid forties or fifties made an outfit. And only thing I remember is she was carrying a bucket and she had like a fucking mop or a broom. I didn't know what it was, but I saw from like chest, no, from like stomach up and, but she was on the second floor. So we were down and then I looked at her. So she just like standing there, like, like this with her shit. And then she's, she's like, like, Oh, yeah, she's me. Yeah, like, can you like, fucking leave so I can clean? And I didn't think about it. I said hi to her. I was like, conversation. I'm like, say hi to her. And I was like, I'm like, like, oh. I'm like, yeah, we're leaving. I, thought, I think I said, yeah. like, good morning. And I said, we're leaving now. And I was walked out to the office <laughs> to go ten the, the keys in. And then, um, no, no, no. We, he was unpacking. They were, they were taking shit to the car. I saw her. I think I said, I went to grab more shit. She was gone. And then I, I go to the, to the front desk. I had to get out and go to like another building was the front desk. And then, um, so I, I had mentioned this lady. I was like, Oh, I see the lady. She was waiting for us. And they were like, what are you talking about? And there's nobody in the second floor anyways. And I was like, what? <laughs> and they were like, Oh, you stayed at, they were like, yeah. She was, so she was like that. I forget who was the guy's name. Um, well, the, the resort was called the Banyan tree, but I don't remember. So there's a writer there on Duval street. No, the, it's the off. It's on. It's the next street over the mall. But there's a who's a writer that used to be there. He used to have a oh, house in the keys. The cat. I forget. The guy with the cats. That guy. Yeah. That guy. I know. I know so, you're talking about. I can't remember his name right so now. So that was one of his houses. Oh, oh wow. no! Because way. they had a whole bunch of little mansions and they bunched them all together and made resorts, right? 
Uh-huh. So that was one of that was his little mansion thing there. It's a beautiful place. Um, and they're like, yeah, people will say, and we were we've heard footsteps like every once in a while. We thought people were staying upstairs. Uh-huh. Like I some, heard yeah, we heard going all, up the stairs. All the time. And we and um we thought people were running upstairs. Like, you know, we we were on the first floor and then some they rent the other no, floor, we, right? We were on the second floor and I heard somebody going up to the third floor. Well that oh wow. We were on the second floor? Yeah. Yeah, because I I, I remember I the second remember. floor because we had the, the patio, which is awesome. Oh, that's because true. then yes. we can <laughs> look onto the street from the second floor. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We had the nice view and but either it way, was, we it had was the a Super Bowl that was going on that same weekend too. So it was just awesome. It was an awesome. I trip. do remember it being another floor and I was like upstairs. I remember saying that and they were like, No, we don't that's closed. Like there's nobody upstairs. And I was like Yeah, and I went oh, to go wow. look at the right and the it, the stairs go it goes upstairs, but the door was padlocked. See, I yeah. didn't notice all that shit. <laughs> Dominic Lafort? No. I've never even heard of that guy. I think I I know actually know who it is. Hold on, I'm gonna Google because I can't it's remember. Like, um it's a very like if you hear you're like, oh that guy. In the key. author in Key West. Key West. Ernest That's Hemingway. what I was thinking, yeah. Ernest Hemingway. Okay, so I was yeah. like a name starts with an E, but I couldn't remember. Yeah, yeah Ernest Hemingway. Yeah, no. Ernest Hemingway house is definitely him, and he had all of the black cats, and I'm obsessed with that fact. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen uh, like a? Uh, now that we're talking about cats, I've seen a ghost cat. Have you ever seen a ghost cat or a ghost anything animal? I should say. I okay so. Part of Death Becomes Us. So we've filmed a few different times together now. Um, Like our producer sets everything up and she'll do some preliminary work and like she'll send us what she's getting before we get to the location. So uh, she was scouting out this spot in New Jersey. We never ended up going there. We went somewhere else, but she was scouting the spot in New Jersey and she was sending us this footage. And um, so she was reviewing it and there was like this black, shadow and you saw it like moving across the the screen and the first time i watched it it was like that's weird i wonder what that was like is that like a bird and you're getting like the shadow or whatever but then when you pause it on a still frame it like goes up a tree and you can see two little like ears and a tail behind Mm. so like it wasn't like quite a cat i don't know what it was but like it had a distinctive animal shape to it um i've talked to dogs like i've talked to animals but i haven't seen a ghost cat (laughs) i haven't seen one so jenny has Mm -hmm. um and and i believe ernesto caught the tail end of it um mela mela that's on the chat and myself we saw we caught um, what we believe was the the a spirit of a of a of a cat in Old Davy's schoolhouse, and I actually awesome. got it on the XLS. Uh-huh. It just popped oh, yeah. in and out like super that quick. Mellow, so mellow. Cool. Uh, you 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 remember? Um, it was the one night that we were investigating the classroom. Um, yeah, the you see like it mapped out a cat. It was awesome. That's it looked like a damn so cat. Cool. Yeah. I'm I'm. I'm actually doing a little reel for that because it's like a short like yeah. video, but um, it was so funny because I think Armando, I was sitting down doing a spirit box, just had a running and I was, right. I was in a, in a desk and Armando came up over to me. I don't know why something had oh, happened because you said it was cold and then Mello went, Oh yeah. Walked behind you just to, to see the area, like how, how wide and how far it was the, the cold spot. And she was like, yeah, it's super cold in the desk right behind her. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she walked, Thank she you, walked Joseph. back, and then I walked there Thank just you. to verify. And yeah, super cold. And then in that, when when we were coming back, that's when the- Like the, it was like, I, I saw the video, she, she was recording, I think, and it yeah. went beep, beep. Like beep, beep. It, yeah. it went like took two steps and then like popped back out. Bye, bye. bye I, Joseph. I'm Thank here you. Saying, I almost said bye, everyone. 
Larry, Larry, we got it. We're not even ending the stream. Bye. Oh man, yeah, I'm like I am wrong, Burger. Like, <laughs> literally, that moment just happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. it. <laughs> you, you leave and Joseph's taking over. Yeah, for <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it, it was it was an option awesome capture. But you did have you did just mention um death among us, right? Death becomes us. Death yeah. becomes so, us. I apologize. So no, please no, tell us fine. about that. Yeah, so I have been working with an amazing producer. I love her. Um, I actually met her when I was in Florida. So we started working together and um, we've been trying to put a show together and it's gone through different iterations. We've been trying to find like the right group of people, the right storyline. Um, but in working with her, I've gotten to meet so many incredible people. Um, so we filmed together in New Jersey, um, which we filmed in a funeral home, which was awesome. Um, and then we just finished an investigation here in Texas. Uh, we went to Amy Bolesky's property. Um, we're getting ready to start showing clips of that. I don't actually, my producers, my producer is in charge of that and I haven't seen any of it yet. So I'm pretty sure that you guys are going to get like a pretty complete view of the investigation and the experiments that we did, but I haven't seen any yet. So I'm not like hundred percent sure. So I'm just going to say clips <laughs> just to cover my bases. Um, but we have been doing a podcast and so we're calling it death becomes us um my co-host and i had been bringing on people in the paranormal so we met amy bolesky that way we got to interview adam barry which was like a wow. huge huge moment for me he is one of the loveliest people that i've ever met in my life um we got to interview dave schrader who is also incredible he had yeah. he led us through an exercise that still like every time I think about it, it blows my mind. Um, but we've had a lot of conversations about the intersection between trauma and the paranormal. And almost everybody that we've talked to has, that is deeply involved in the paranormal has gone through some stuff. And so we started kind of asking like, like, why is that? Does it make you more open? Um, we just had on Shannon, who runs the Tarot Diagnosis. Um, Shannon's practice is very similar to what I do, where uh, in my personal practice, I use tarot more as a tool to better understand myself and my struggles and how to like work through them. Um, so we've gotten to talk to amazing people, and now we are getting back to investigating. So... Uh, when we investigated Amy's property in Texas, um, most of that was outside, but we were actually joined by Adam Berry. Um, he remote um, called in and he did a Frank Spock session with us, um, which was incredible. We had done a, we had done a night on our own and then we brought Adam in. And he didn't know anything, like he didn't know the history yet. He didn't know anything about the case or about what was going on. And from a distance, like we had all, we had devices going off, the cat balls were going off, the REM pods, like we're getting pretty solid interaction where we were. Um, and then when Adam started the Frank Spock session, immediately all of his devices started going off like ours went dead and his were like lighting up in the background and he was getting amazing amazing things that lined up perfectly with what we were doing here in texas um so i'm super 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 excited for everybody to see that uh and we are going to be doing more investigative things um I'm not sure how much I can say about that, but there will be more coming from us. There's been a little bit of a lull because I've been on a, I, 
I've been on a little brief social media hi hiatus that I'm coming back. And <laughs> so there's going to be more, there's going to be more content, but um, for sure follow death becomes us because uh, we have, we have clips and <clears throat> I had one of those moments where I got in a fight with a ghost and I called it. I was like, you bitch ass ghost. <laughs> I don't know if that's <laughs> but I want the record to show that I definitely said that. <laughs> like that ghost made me so mad. <laughs> it it, like, death becomes us. Is that on Instagram? Do you have an Instagram? Where yeah, can they watch uh, the clips? Watch the clips on YouTube. Um YouTube, so okay. subscribe on YouTube. You can also see shorter clips on Instagram at Death Becomes Us and TikTok as well. Um, so we're on all of the major platforms. And you can listen to any of the episodes that we've done on any major, well, actually, I feel like we're on like every podcast platform at this point. Um, so wherever you listen to podcasts, check out Death Becomes Us. Um yeah, I, I am really excited about the work that we're doing and the direction that we're moving in. Um, it's been so cool to have a chance to connect with these people because like it was intimidating as shit. I'm not going to lie. Like the first few that we did, I was like, I am like. I am small fish. You are, you are big fish. I don't know. Like, how, yes. did, I, how did I even end up here? Mm -hmm. But everybody that we've talked to has been so lovely. Like we talked to Greg Lawson, who was a detective and that was fucking cool because that's, that's what I like to do in the paranormal is go in and see. yes. Thank, thank you so you much. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, death becomes us pod on Instagram. I forgot the pod part, but we come up either way. Um, yeah, so I I've been really loving it. I love I love my team. Um, I couldn't ask for a better producer, if I'm being honest. Like, I, when I went to her, because I was like, motherfucker, I like I was like, I was when I was going on my social media break, I had you know shit hit the fan, and I was like, I think. I'm going to step away just for like a tad. And I was like, Oh, is she like, am I going to, is she going to think that I'm like less professional because I'm like, Hey, I can't come to work for a couple of weeks. Um, but she was, she was amazing. So you couldn't ask for a better team. Um, and then if you are interested in hearing more of my, of what I do with the cards, you could actually hear me every week. Um, I am, on the sideshow for Campfire Tales of the Strange and Unsettling is called Camp Divination. Um, so they do on their main feed, they cover a story of something strange or unusual every week. And they asked me to join them and they ask me questions and I pull cards um, after the fact. So like this last week we did the Ammons family haunting, the house of uh, the demon house, the house with 2000 demons. Um, so that has been really fun for me because that way I can still do what I love to do from the comfort of my chair. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. All the, the places that you've gone to, what has been your favorite location that you've investigated? So my favorite location, it's not mm -hmm. even one that I've like talked about publicly, but, um, I've been spending a lot of time in Virginia. I got to go to the Edgar Allan Poe Museum, which was amazing. Nice. I had talked to his former fiance, like he broke up with her and then they ended up getting back together. They were supposed to get married and he died like days before. Like I talked to her and that was like amazing. That was so cool. Um, but there was there's just this house on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere, Virginia. And I turned and I was like, that bitch is haunted. And <laughs> right I'll do the same thing. I'm like, I don't even have no kind of ability, yeah. but I'm like, it looks spooky. It's haunted. Yeah. That, that bitch is haunted. Well, so like, I think that, I think that the woman who is haunting that property noticed me noticing her because she popped up at the place that I was staying and um, started investigating and getting her storyline. And I've gone back um, because I, I got the bug. I have to solve this. Like once I'm like, once I have my hooks in something like this, I can't, I can't stop until I feel like I've got yes. all the skills. Nice. 
And um, yeah. so, like, I found, um, well, yeah, her father's grave, her husband's grave, her children's grave. Her grave is gone. There's, like, I'm sure she's still there. She must be in one of the plots, but she doesn't have a marker mm. anymore. And I'm just, like, I need some record. I need to know more about what I know what I think happened to her. I'm hoping to do something with that story in particular. Um, I don't know what yet, but I'd like it's it's juicy. It's got some meat to it. So I'd like that to turn into I'd like to present that in some way, shape or form. But yeah. um, that right now is my favorite. And it's just a little a little a rundown house on the side of the highway because I saw it and it turned into this awesome story. So that's, that's the least favorite. expecting places. You never know. You know yeah. Yeah, I've been to some awesome places. I've experienced some off, like the Edgar Allan Poe Museum. That was that was legit. I couldn't ask for anything better than that. But the one that I'm really like, I want to go back there is middle of nowhere, Virginia. <laughs> oh man, That's I haven't gone. We I see. I haven't traveled outside of Cal. Well, Nevada is probably the furthest I've traveled for a haunted location. Yeah, so I I'd like to travel more. I wanted yeah. to, um, like, in my dream life, it's not going to happen now because my kids have activities. Like, yeah, how that's dare, my, that was my you know? go anywhere, yeah. How dare. Yeah, but yeah. if I could, I would travel. Like, I would be living in an RV and traveling full time. Just yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah. yeah, that that is the dream. If I could, if I could figure out a way to make that happen, but um, my kids love their love the things that they have going on. So I'm like, fine. Oh. <laughs> I won't yeah. then. <laughs> yeah. I'll be a mom. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but yeah. so I, I go off when I can. Uh, I don't get like, I don't get a ton of opportunities. I am, I'm a single mom. I do live with my parents, but I don't, I, I'm a very hands-on mom. So um, yeah. I don't get, I don't get a ton of opportunities to like get out. So um it's one that of the great she's things. She's always around it. Like, yeah. she's never alone, literally. I know. Yeah. No, for real. Yeah. I always, my dog's in here right now. Like, if I don't have one of my kids, like, there's <laughs> yeah, always, there's exactly. always someone in here. Yeah. My dog has, like, severe separation anxiety, which is ridiculous. He's 100 pounds, and he panics if he's alone. Aww. So it's like, he's, he's the sweetest, sweetest he's baby. So but he also eats drywall and couches when he's alone. So, like, Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my yeah. dad's so. pre previous dog did that too, and that shit is still there. Like, yeah, they that dog's been dead for like over 10 15 years. And, and guess you. what? That drywall still jacked up. Okay, yeah, I mean, so I'm and, dying and that's to fix thing. it myself, and it's not even my house. Just please See? let me See? fix it. Bro. Go in there, go in there with this. some drywall. Yeah. <laughs> Sheet, drywall sheets. Yeah. No, it's yes. Yeah, so I, I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of time alone. I don't have mm -hmm. a lot of time to travel. So when I can, I'm out the door and on a plane somewhere spooky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Now that my kids are all older, I have dogs. So I can't I still can't travel. So it's like yeah. shit. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. But you uh, really quick before we mm -hmm. wrap up. Um you t I was thinking about the trauma you were saying, and yeah. do you want to share maybe what theories you had came up with that? Because that had me thinking about like why, so why trauma and like why maybe more susceptible mm -hmm. to paranormal? Okay, so I can't I can't prove this. This is just like this is just something that I thought about when you experience trauma. If you have experienced a profound trauma. For you. So I'm not saying like, if you go online, there's lists of what big trauma is. Trauma is big based on the way that it affected you personally. You. But scientifically speaking, when you have experienced trauma, it alters your brain chemistry and the cells in your body. So literally, it's a moment of death. You are no longer the same person that you were before. Is it an actual near death experience? For most people, no. But there is a distinct before and after. Shit. Yes. Yeah. And if you look at tarot, the death card is not literal death. That's an energetic death. That's a change. You are evolving in some way. Some cycle is ending. So my theory is that people who have encountered 
hefty amounts of trauma or trauma of any kind and find themselves drawn to the paranormal, it's because they have experienced death in their own way and they're a little bit closer to it. And when you've experienced something like that, from the people that I've spoken to, it gives you a curiosity and it makes you want to ask questions that you probably didn't before because yeah. I didn't have, I mean, like I was interested in this before, but I was also traumatized by the time I got into all this. So like, <laughs> I, I think that I, I think it, I think it makes you curious in different ways, curious about the way that the world works, curious about what happens to us in ways that people who haven't experienced trauma, and that's not to say that everyone in the paranormal is traumatized or that no one, it, it, or if you haven't experienced trauma, then you haven't experienced the paranormal. That's not mm -hmm. what I'm saying at all. I just mean that it seems to like open a door, so to speak. It it changes your mindset and it makes you want Almost to- like it rewires you somehow up there. Yeah, if you wanna yeah. ask questions, you yeah. wanna figure out why, Mm -hmm. But I think it is that moment of energetic death when you have crossed over in one way, shape, or form. And I think that the spirits can recognize that in you and it just kind of like opens you up. It's like that, um, oh, I saw the perfect quote to describe this the other day. But a, a lot of time in spiritual community, they will talk about being broken so that there is more room to grow. And it's that mm -hmm. kind of, that kind of vibe. Like, is it fun? No, but, <laughs> but cool shit happens after the fact sometimes. <laughs> so, I, I have wrote down about emotion. I was thinking about maybe like a, something traumatic. Obviously you feel so much emotion from that. Everybody's mm -hmm. different, you know, whatever yeah. trauma somebody goes through. And that emotion is what opens up. Yeah. That yeah. um I guess that door for that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah you exactly. Think, do you think it happens to everybody or it just happens to certain I'm not people? sure. I'm not sure because I know plenty of people who have experienced trauma and aren't in the paranormal. I think, you know, I I I I don't think it's a blanket statement that applies to everyone it's just something that i've been noticing the more people that i'm talking to and interviewing for death becomes us it's a it's a common thread and i don't know that everybody likes to talk about that right. and i think i i am very open about my mental health and i'm very open about my struggles and so i think i've kind of built like a space where people are like oh yeah me too and it kind of opens the door to have those kinds of conversations so like i need to talk to a lot more people um so if you've had trauma and in the paranormal hit me up <laughs> no, it, it, it is something that that i find interesting and like i don't have a super definite answer i'm just i'm just kind of guessing based on what i've noticed um mm -hmm. and from what i know about studying trauma so um yeah, but that, could, that, that could be like, you know, not necessarily a medium somehow, but you can like start picking up like uh, empath type feelings, mm -hmm. well, right? So it's like many. Yeah. Different yeah. Things. It doesn't have to be like one thing that trauma links you to, right? Yeah. If you've if you've had trauma or if you've been abused in any way, emotional abuse, um, mm -hmm. it there have been studies show it is a side effect that you will become more empathetic and you are more closely tuned to the emotions of the people around you mm -hmm. because it's it's a survival mechanism it it's yeah. built to keep what happened to you from happening again so exactly. you can become more empathetic um and like i've always been uh aware of people's feelings Mm -hmm. But I also know that I'm more aware after the fact, like someone can text me, Hey, and I'm like, what's wrong with you? I don't do that because yeah, yeah I, I try not to get in everybody's business, but like, yeah, someone, someone can just text me, Hey, and I'll be like, Oh no. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it, it, that, it is a definite side effect. Um, but people can have those qualities without having trauma also. So like it's, all of these things, you can experience it with or without it. It's just an interesting thread that I've been noticing that to people who've gone through shit are interested right. in ways 
that maybe other people aren't. Because if you haven't had to question your reality or if you haven't had to face something hard, I didn't ask questions. I was just like, cool, this is my life. I like what I'm doing. And it wasn't until afterwards that I was like, hmm. I mean, lots of other reasons, but I wasn't curious about spirituality or anything like that until I had already been through some shit and I wanted different answers than the ones that I knew. I wanted to know. I didn't, I didn't, the answers that I was given didn't apply to me anymore. And I wanted to know more. And it seems like so many other people out there in this field had similar moments, maybe not exactly like what I'm describing, but like, it gives you that drive to go beyond what's normal and what's accepted about life and death and everything else in between. So yeah. I love it. Very good. Love it. I'm trying to do my little notes. Jen has taught me something because I'm like, shit, I forgot what I was going to say. Or, <laughs> you need to my notes. So. <laughs> notes. Yep. I do that when I'm interviewing too. <laughs> oh my Keeping notes. Yep. Uh, I'm so oh, bad. This, this was awesome. I'm, I'm so yeah. glad we got to talk to you. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. We, we haven't Sorry if I'm checked out. I was texting long my long daughter long. back and forth. So sometimes I was like checked out for a minute. So I apologize. No, <laughs> I mean, you, can, you have you have my wheels turning because I, I can relate to that. So but that it was mm. it's good to See? for others yeah. to hear that. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's definitely gonna be something that we are talking about more on Death Becomes Us. It's been it's been a theme on the podcast so far, inadvertently, like it just keeps coming up and coming up and coming up. But I know that as a team, we are all interested in exploring that connection a little bit more. Um, so I don't know what that's going to look like exactly yet, but um, we are talking about different ways that we can explore the connection between trauma and the paranormal a little bit deeper. So um, follow Death Becomes Us and uh, we'll keep y'all updated on what we're doing. Yeah, I'm excited. Thank you, Dan Tex, Trauma yeah. and the Paranormal. Go back. Trauma. Maybe the last 15 minutes, you'll be good. You'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very interesting. <laughs> well, thank you, Carly. Carly. Thank uh, you. Any... Thank you for coming on. I this is my first time talking to you, so it was very nice. Yeah, that's what it's I see. Nice yeah, you you gave a lot of stuff that I love talking to different people because I'm learning stuff as I go, you know, like different yeah. Yeah. With the mediumship type and tarot card readings. I don't know nothing about. So I love it. I think it's so interesting. It's so cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. So please follow Carly. She's a dear friend of ours. Uh, she's, yeah. like I said before, she's been pretty much with us when we started investigating with our group. Uh, so we've known her for a long time, and it's been great yeah. to see how she's progressed um, yes. since since leaving uh, Florida. Uh, it's been awesome talking to you. Uh, Thank you. It, this is the best we can do besides doing uh, face to face. So this is I know. Really <laughs> um, and yeah, please follow her. Um, show her some love like you do to us, everybody. And uh, I'm excited to see those clips. So, is, is, yeah. is Carly the one that told you about the cards, Jen? That you were telling me about the cards? That she yes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, she went to Mori, yeah. Correct. Is 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 because of her? Yep. The memento they, Mori. They look, like, they look like this. It's my so favorite. It's an oracle. It's an oracle cards. Or yeah, I'm a Norman, like, but the most they're mainly oracle. But um, yeah. Let me tell you, spirit comes through with these cards like spot on, and then and it, my favorite. It's mm -hmm. really quick. Crazy. What's the difference no between idea. cards? Like, what is oracle? Like, I I have cards myself, but I don't. Uh -huh. I, I just kind of sit there. That's what the tarot. Color looks like, so people yeah. look it up. Tarot is a set system, so there will be the same number of cards. You will have the same. There's a major arcana mm -hmm. and a minor arcana. Sometimes the suits are called slightly different things, but the cards are all the same. So once you know tarot, you could pick up any tarot deck and it's fine. The difference between tarot and oracle, they work the same, but oracle decks are whatever the author and the artist created to be. So there is no set meaning to that. So every oracle deck is different. So I own way more oracle decks than I do tarot. I think my tarot collection is keeping up or is catching up at this point, but um, oracle it has a slightly different vibe. Like um, there's lots of memes that are like, um, do you want to be slapped in the face today? Or do you want your message delivered gently? Like sometimes tarot is like very like, Hey, 
you're going to get your shit together. They did that, did that to me the other day. They were like, are you going to go back to work? And I was like, well, <laughs> well. <laughs> that was rude. Uh, do you <laughs> see, do you see what's happening? Like I am resting and you're always telling me to rest. And they're like, Hey, go back to work. Um, but yeah, so th that's the main difference is Tarot is a set system and Oracle is whatever the author and the artist want it so to there's be. there's no so book with or Oracle? Oracle decks? Yeah, Oracle decks will yeah, have their have own guidebooks. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is a little easier to read the Oracle. Um, there's so much that can go into a tarot card, but you don't have to memorize Oracle cards either. Um, I know most, actually, I think I know all of the Memento Mori now, but every once in a while I still get tripped up and I'm like, oh, fuck, I lost my guidebook for that one. Dude, so that, we're... that deck is so big, like, I have to it's use the huge. guidebook. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah, that I that one and um, yeah, that's a big how many cards this is. This is one yep. set, and this is a whole that's other one set. set. This is like more than a hundred fucking cards it's, here. Yeah, it's huge. I haven't divided uh, now. Yeah, and this is the other one that I use for my and I love investigative that one. I readings. Got it. I never did. Yeah, yeah so this is Oracle's big more than its regular tarot. No, they, the author can make it whatever. No, yeah, no, no. It's, it's random, a, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's random. There's there's no set number of cards. So some of them are really small, some of them are bigger. Yeah. Memento Mori started off as a, like a smaller deck, but she released expansion packs. And so the reason that they're so like our decks are so big now is every time there's an expansion pack, I'm like, well shit, yeah, I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> like yeah. um yeah, and so we have all expansions. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we we have them all, all of them. It that is yeah, if you're interested in doing spirit work with cards of any kind, Memento Mori, it's made by Claire Goodchild. I think on, on social media, she's black into the moon. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, and she moon. also, yeah, and she also has a book about um, mm -hmm. like different methods for spirit communication. I have it. I haven't read it yet, but I flipped through it and it looks, it looks fascinating. Um, yeah, so Oracle is not a, it works the same way, but it's not a set in stone system the way that tarot is. Okay. I think easy well, hopefully, I don't know if my daughter's still here. Probably not because she's blowing me up on text, but. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I'm, I'm going to have her rewatch this. I had, I, like I said, I have cards. I don't know if they're Oracle or they're regular tarot cards. I have no idea, but I just bought them because they were. Cool. Just show, show them to me later and then. Yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Perfect. For sure. But yeah. All right. All right. Well, everyone. Right. Uh, well, first of all, Carly. Before I do forget, stay on. It's okay. kind of a tradition. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Joy, where can the good folks find you at? So you guys can find us at JJ Paranormal or Joy and Joy and Joey on YouTube. All right. And Beb, where can they find us at? Uh. 305 Paranormal on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Yeah. All right. And you can also find me at Mr.305 Paranormal on IG. There I discuss a little bit of everything. Um, and as far as for next week, we're going to continue on this uh, trend that we have going on with Friends of 305 Paranormal. We will have... Um, the owner of the Gilcrest, old Gilcrest County Jail, Lee. Lee. Awesome. He's a good have friend you been of out, have ours. You been there? Yes. Have we been there or Carly? Yeah. Carly, Carly, have you been there? Carly, have no. you been no. there? No, no, no. She had yeah. left Florida. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, he's, it's, it's great um, what he's doing. He's actually getting um, the, the property historically recognized by the state of Florida. Uh, so it could be a landmark. Uh, so he's in the middle of doing that right now. We've investigated there. That's actually where um, stories of of that folks have heard that I've had a an encounter, I guess you can say, um, was in that location. Uh, but what he's doing there with uh, he's wanting to churn. And, and just to give you guys a little bit of a a little bit of a summary of what we're talking about next week. Uh, he has a camera system called the Casper. And what that camera system is, his thoughts of doing for the future is having paranormal groups investigate the jail. And you can watch 
the camera feeds of the of everybody's investigation. He'll have different groups in different months or whatever, and then you can go and, and watch if you want to do it. It's kind of, I think he's going to do it kind of like a pay-per-view thing. I'm not sure how much he's going to charge, but it's kind of like It'll be like, like a live feed, yeah. But you'll watch live that's feed. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, okay. So that's going to be our guest for next week. Yes. Uh, thank, uh, oh, and awesome, uh, thank you, Dantex, as yes. always, uh, for your help and and showing everybody you said uh, i think i got them all yes you did sir <laughs> <laughs> all of them links thank you dan thank you, dan no dan yeah. only knows one way of operating and that's going above and beyond thank you yeah, my right. friend yeah. thank we you. really truly appreciate you and uh you. on that note till next week guys Peace out. Okay, where to find? Have a good week. Don't look at the sun tomorrow. All right, goodbye. We said a quarter on Charlie, right? Did you give your your Instagram, or if you want people to follow you on Instagram? Oh, oh it, it's a Carly. Yeah, yeah Carly dot Latham on Instagram. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. Same on TikTok, but I don't post there very often. So Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you guys for joining. Till next week. Wait, one last time. What's your last oh. name? How do you pronounce it? Late them. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> I had to look at the paper. Bye, everybody.